Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. It's nice seeing you this early in the year. I hope it was good for everyone. It was nice here at TFNN. Let's take a look at what we have going on today. We have the ES Mini uh, down about 0.65 percent. We have the Russell down about 2.32 percent after quite a big run up uh, in the weeks preceding uh, Christmas holiday and New Year's. And Q's down about 0.89 percent. The Dow futures down about 0.59. So we have gold taken down here about 1.29 percent. Let me see here. We have the dollar actually on the way up. We were looking at a down target of 99. Uh, and the DXY, uh, that was going to bring some very nice buying uh, kind of energy into the markets. Well, we're seeing the dollar kind of move back up. Of course, the 10-year note, uh, the yields went up a little bit uh, today as well. We have Steel Dynamics. We'll talk about them a little bit. They're trading at 119.35. Went all the way up uh, about 120, even a little bit higher if I remember. Let's take a look. About 128, and that was December 14th. So I, I really think that we're going to see a big year for steel. Um, obviously, you had everything going on uh, with Nippon Steel, buying U.S. Steel. Uh, there seems to be a lot of demand going on. Of course, we have the, uh, what do they call it, the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed by the Biden administration. That's going to, I'm not really sure how that results in, like, less inflation because it's higher government spending, but I... Anyways, the point is, is that a lot of steel is going to be being purchased going forward. I think the same uh, for copper as well. Let me see if uh, we have the copper contract. The futures here trading about three dollars and eighty-seven cents. Take a look at southern copper as well. This has uh, done quite well uh, over the last uh, month, at least. Really, even earlier this year, we had a high of eighty-eight forty. Just trading down a little bit uh, at about eighty-three eighty right now. Um, on less volume than we got on the movement up. Uh, I'm personally looking at copper. I think it's. Uh, I think we're going to see some good stuff moving forward with it. Disney, we're trading at 91.70. Apple, we'll talk a bit about them. Uh, trading at about 184.43. Had quite a move down from 199.62 in recent times. Tesla, of course, down. Uh, 3.58%. What's going on with that? Well, Tesla did actually pretty well last quarter. However, I think there is some sentiment that EV sales won't be as good this year. I, in fact, I think that's a general sentiment for cars going into 2024. I uh, think it was a really good year uh, for new car purchases last year. Um, so we might see some kind of declining demand. Uh, Tesla has been able to really navigate what's going on um, in China. They've offered cheaper cars, and this kind of resulted in uh, more people purchasing them, which is really good. Uh, we have a lot of EV competition. Namely, in China, you have BYD. Uh, that did surpass Tesla in battery electric vehicles, and we might see that going forward. Rivian is doing very well on topping their production forecast. Excuse me, their just production in general, and the forecasts are looking good as well. Uh, again, for me, that is not the major thing with Tesla is not necessarily selling these cars. That's huge as it is currently, but it's going to be the software uh, that they use in order to kind of achieve self-driving uh, capabilities, which I think is really the big appealing thing uh, behind Tesla. Take a look at Apple. They had basically declining sales, uh, some issues in China where they're not selling as much of their phones there. Um, Chinese government officials need to buy uh, Chinese-made phones. I think you had something like 100 billion like wiped off. Uh, it was actually pretty intense. 100 billion market cap wiped off. That's more than Ford and GMs combined. Uh, slid lower valuation by about 107 billion. So again, this is just kind of on like lackluster, I guess performance essentially, right? I think less people are buying Apple abroad. Uh, Apple still dominates. One of the things I wanted to talk about too with Apple, and it kind of ties into what I like talking about, you know, with like IT security and stuff like that. Um, Kaspersky, which is a major cybersecurity analyst kind of firm, they were able to find actually a new vulnerability in Apple devices. Um, this was released about four days ago. It's called Triangle DB is the name, uh, at least the colloquial name they've given for the CVE. Essentially what's happening is Inside the ARM CPU of the Apple phones, and really all Apple devices, 
there was like a hidden registry that existed. And this was like unknown uh, to anyone obviously outside of Apple and probably um, unknown to people outside of the dev team. Essentially, if you knew the hash for this, you could basically get kernel level kernels, like the most basic level of the, of the operating system. You were able to just basically pull and add to memory. And what this was doing is essentially allowing people, um, you know, hackers to access all capabilities of the iPhone. So recording, uh, whether that's voice or video, um, able to send text, able to uh, essentially just do anything on that phone, which was allowing essentially other forms of uh, attacks to happen. Of course, you had Pegasus earlier this year that was developed by NSO Group. Anyways, long story short, there are some actually extremely fundamental issues um, with the ARM CPU. So this is a vulnerability that is basically built into a lot of these chips. And obviously you can go probably into like tinfoil hat area regarding this kind of stuff, but I think the biggest issue that this presents is you have a lot of major cybersecurity firms, especially like Cisco, who use Apple products because they're viewed as being extremely safe. Of course, when you had the San Bernardino um, tragedy a few years back, the feds were trying to get into the phone with some kind of backdoor and Apple said they didn't have one. Um, well, this is kind of something that looks like it would be a backdoor. Uh, you need to know, you know what you're putting into this hidden registry, but once you do know uh, what it is, you can just get full access uh, to people's phones. Th this vulnerability was really instrumental and again, what I was talking about with Pegasus and on a broader scale, what's called zero click vulnerabilities where the end user doesn't need to do anything. They just are sent some kind of payload and a whole chain of events occur and the, the phone is then compromised. Um, I don't, I, I would assume in some sense they'd be able to do something to kind of patch it, but the problem is, is that it exists on the hardware itself, right? This isn't like a software thing where you just patch it. I, I would suppose maybe they could create something that would, that would, in the software, like a new iOS update, that would kind of block access to that hidden registry. But regardless, it's a very uh, glaring vulnerability. And this, this only came out very recently and uh, is kind of being suggested as the, the cause of a lot of breaches that Apple is having on their phones. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.